Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our panel discussion on interventions addressing digital divide in girls' education in India. My name is Ankita Javeri. I am a Shalika Cake board member who, and I am grateful to be here today with you. Um, I think we have a really engaging discussion coming our way for the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and by way of that, let me introduce our panelists. Uh, so first we have uh, Deborati. They co-lead Grassroots Capacity Building uh, at Point of View. It's a feminist nonprofit working with women, girls, uh, gender, gender and sexual minorities and people with disabilities. Uh, they work with communities of women, queer and trans people to build skills and capacities to navigate digital spaces freely and safely. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, our next panelist is Preeti. Uh, Preeti is the academic lead for People's Exemplar Schools, uh, which is run in partnership with Municipal Corporation of Delhi. Uh, she ensures quality lessons through teaching, uh, teaching uh, through teacher training and coaching and high and consistent attendance um, across grades as well as enrollment. So thank you for being here, Preeti. Uh, Priyanka uh, is our next next panelist, and she works as a champion of the collectivization initiative at Feminist Approach to Technology (FAT). And Priyanka is a graduate of um, FAT's Young Women's Leadership Program, and she's designed and run campaigns with peers on issues of early early enforced marriage, as well as uh, reproductive health. So, thank you, uh, Priyanka, for being here. And our last panelist is Chanchal. Um, and Chanchal also works as a champion at Feminist Approach to Technology. Um, she manages their uh, human resources and administrative work. And she also began her journey at FAT as a, as a program participant. Um, she now oversees residential workshops for young women leaders. So again, thank you for being here, Daniwa. Um, to our audience, if you have any questions, uh, Feel free to put them in the chat. If um Ajne answer Kursaketa, we will post the answers in Shadika's uh, so social media. Uh, um, both, uh, and we're also recording this, so this will be available on Shadika's YouTube channel and on Shadika's uh, Facebook page as well. Uh, so thank you. Uh, let's let's jump in. Uh, so keeping in line with this year's uh, Women's Day theme, we'll talk through interventions designed to equip women and young girls as they take on the new digital reality. Uh, our conversations will touch upon the inter intersections of gender, caste, disability, and economic disparities to understand both the gaps and the potential that technology has in um, enabling gender justice. According to Oxfam's India Inequality Report that came out in 2022, um, only uh, the more uh, access to internet is more available in urban urban areas in India, about 44%, whereas it's only about 17% in rural, rural India. Um, and across different caste groups as well, only 4% of students from scheduled castes and tribes had um, had access to computer and internet in 2022. There are lots of um, there have been lots of online education success stories, with many new uh, ed tech platforms coming up during the pandemic. But when the digital space is built for a small group, right, a, a certain user type, urban English uh, speaking, able bodied. Um, folks who have continuous access, continuous and smooth access to internet. Um, interventions that stop at just providing devices like smartphones and laptops are, are not sustainable. They're not holistic. Um, so as we think about Shadika's partner sites across India, and we think about the lockdowns uh, because of the pandemic in 2020, 2021, meant that a lot of programs had to uh, do things differently. Uh, they, they had to pivot to address these issues of accessibility, safety, security. For example, uh, Shair and Varodra started online computer sessions with girls to help build technical skills. Um, another, another one of our partners, Jagla, uh, older women are working with younger women, uh, with younger girls to support, support their academics through online. Uh, 
So with that kind of context, uh, let me um, turn it over to our brilliant panelists. So Priyanka, our first question is for you. Uh, can you tell us about some programs designed by your organization to ensure um, kind of continued uh, education, both di digital and otherwise, uh, during the pandemic? Okay. Uh, yes. Um, thank you for inviting me and giving this opportunity. Um, like you also said that uh, in digital space, uh, if we talk about digital space, only few uh, uh, people have access, and and especially uh, the certain people who are financially strong. Um, so they can access easily. And fat working with the community. Um, who are marginalization, who work as daily wages, uh, wages. and um, for them, uh, having a three-time meals is difficult. So uh, accessing technology is another layer of challenge in, in their life. And if somebody in our community, because I belong to the same community, if they have uh, the say, if they want to access the technology, only in that community, men can have the access of technology. Uh, so that is another uh, another layer. Uh, so when I I clearly remember when I was eighteen year old, I was had my first phone uh, because my uncle bought a new phone. Uh, in a way, I will not get uh, the phone and get introduced uh, with in uh, internet. Actually, after that, I'll uh, get introduced with internet. Uh, and the fact working with the community, where like giving phone to girl is like ladki bigger jaygi, because there is a uh, uh, perspective. Like if we give the phone, uh, girls will spoil and they will not going to listen us. So that have a perspective. So uh, girl face this problem every day. So uh, when uh, we work with the uh, girls, they have a very fear of technology in the starting. So we have to uh, first, uh, we have to work with that, like so they can um, overcome their fears. And, and during lockdown, as you said, like uh, during pandemic and uh, lots of things have changed. And in when lockdown happened, uh, because the, participants we work are uh, most of the participants uh, only able to use the technology when they are in fat space after fat space not they they don't have access so we are uh, during lockdown we are not able to connect with the participants our, our participants so uh, we bought uh, new phones and tablets uh, for them so they can uh, use technology and continue their education because we work with the girls who also going to college and school so so and they can connect with us, us also so we do that um after uh, after giving them phone, I thought like that is not enough in during the pandemic also. So we use a very different method uh, like screen recording and screen sharing. Uh, through that, we tell them how they can use uh, software like Zoom uh, and um, Slack, Signal, etc. And and that also because they able to use the technology um, during lockdown and pandemic, uh, they able to overcome uh, the uh, they overcome the lots of problems in their own community like one of our uh, participants she used technology to get the information about government uh, uh, rations and manrega and she give that information to all the community and support them to um, get that benefit from uh, community during the lockdown so that they use so we also see that using technology uh, for women is very important for their survival and continue their education. That's all I can say. Thank you, Priyanka. And it, it's true, right? If women and students are not able to access sustained use of technology, um, they risk uh, kind of dropping out and falling behind behind in school. So one thing Shavika does is uh, provide a comprehensive technology package to all of our scholars. Um, and so that includes computer, uh, computer literacy classes, access to internet, 
and let you know that they can choose if they want all three, if they want just um, one or two of the three uh, based on based on their need. And so Preeti, a similar similar question for you. Uh, can you talk to us about some some key initiatives and programs that your organization um, has undertaken to educate and bridge the digital divide in schools? Preeti, you're on mute. Yes. So at present, uh, People has collaborated with Amazon Future Engineers program where uh, we are on a mission to build uh, digital labs and a curriculum which will cater to the needs of 24th century schools and when, uh, we talk about the digital uh, upskilling of the kids. And uh, we decided that we want to start it as early as possible. We would, would not wait for uh, uh, children to go into secondary school and then learn computers and digital education and not just uh, restricting it to learning to run a device. You're also uh, you're seeing this entire program as which would build confidence and instill skills uh, which are long, uh, lifelong, such as critical thinking and um, problem solving and team building. And other than that, we, uh, we are also uh, including uh, a very important aspect which includes exploring the right approach to utilizing technology around it when they have so much of exposure uh, around technology and internet. So currently what people is doing is uh, we have three schools uh, which we are running as example of schools with MCD uh, in partnership with MCD. So um, in these schools, we are having direct classes with around more than 600 students every day. And uh, with the help of Amazon, we have around 400 tabs uh, and uh, 30 uh, laptops, which we are utilizing to uh, provide these classes to students. And we are also building a curriculum around it. Uh, not just that, uh, so we did, that, uh, did this as a pilot in our three schools and uh, we are scaling it up uh, in entire MCD. To start with, we have started, with, uh, started working with 27 more schools through our teacher development program and uh, where we are including more than 5,000 uh, students and uh, the similar program which we are running in our three schools is reaching uh, more than 5,000 students there. Thank you. Thank you, Preeti. Um, uh, just want to know if you have a question, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, that, that's to our audience. In which feel free to answer in Hindi or English. We do have translation services. Uh, my Hindi is a little kachipaki. Um, so, but uh, yeah, so feel free to answer in, in any language that, that you feel comfortable in. Dabarati, uh, Apkiliabi, same question. Um, kind of, what are some of the key initiatives and programs that your organization has uh, worked on um, to address uh, issues of access to technology? Thank you so much, Ankita. Um, so, point of view, we are a feminist nonprofit. And we work very closely with communities of women, girls, queer and trans persons, uh, sex workers, grassroots activists, people with disabilities. And one of our primary programs is on the intersections of gender, sexuality, and technology, where we work very closely with communities to build um, the skills and capacities that they need to access and use uh, digital spaces freely and safely. Another core of our work is the understanding that all the inequalities that uh, women, um, gender and sexual minorities that they experience in offline spaces in their lives um, also extend to digital or online spaces, be it um, say gender norms, gender based violence, inaccess, anything. And in our capacity building programs with communities, we really try and explore this understanding of how um, gender-based inequalities work in a continuum across physical and digital spaces and how the experiences are also so varied, uh, you know, like based on identities and intersections with gender, caste, um, occupation, disability, and so on. So among the recent um, initiatives, uh, we have worked with communities of women domestic workers in West Bengal uh, during COVID. Um, on sort of building um, their skills to use digital um, platforms, um, smartphones and the internet. And 
most of them were very new smartphone users who were um, sort of compelled to buy phones during COVID or had just started using phones that were shared with male members of the family, uh, primarily because a lot of payments and transactions had gone online and they were working women. So at that point, if they did not have a phone or if they did not use online payments, they were experiencing much more um, sort of financial precarity. Um, so we did this program virtually with them uh, because on ground work at that point was not possible. And they learned like right from the basics of how to use very basic features of a smartphone to much more advanced things around digital security on social media, how they can use WhatsApp to collectivize during COVID. And an important component was building financial resilience and independence by learning how to use digital payments. So the participants in the program, they then went on to become community uh, trainers in their own standing. And they went on to teach these skills that they built to uh, many more other uh, you know, women domestic workers in their communities. So like a peer learning model. Uh, we did a similar virtual program with queer and trans activists as well, who were from low income communities, um, informal workers in Gujarat. But here again, uh, like the needs were different. Uh, many of them were already using smartphones, social media and apps um, and were much more sort of uh, tech savvy uh, for their work and activism. They were using uh, digital spaces. But again, given their gender and sexuality, they were facing very specific digital privacy security issues. So here again, the focus of the program was digital security as well, uh, like addressing issues around surveillance, transphobia, online violence, uh, besides also building financial independence by learning safe digital transactions. And again, these queer and trans activists, they became community trainers and passed on this knowledge to more uh, uh, people and informal workers in their communities and uh, very recently like when the lockdowns eased up we went back on ground and one of our programs was with trans sex workers in Kolkata um, individuals who are um, who you know uh, who are marginalized by gender sexuality occupation so multiple layers of marginalities uh, which is why they experience other specific issues online uh, privacy was a big issue because during the pandemic, sex work had to go online and they were offering services on various uh, sort of new platforms that they had not uh, explored before. And they were experiencing newer issues like a lot of image based abuse, you know, video calls being recorded without consent, screenshots, along with uh, financial precarity. For example, clients would send fake screenshots of payments being made. So um, although curriculums really tailor are tailored to the communities uh, that um, participate and uh, the sex workers they learn how to respond to some of these specific issues that they face uh, not just as sex workers but also as trans persons and again this also was a peer learning model and they became community trainers as well so these are um, some recent examples there are many others like I can share them through the rest of the conversation thank you thank you um, so yeah, conversations around digital divide and access to edu virtual education, uh, they have to be intersectional, like, like you said, um, and continued usage, and we'll talk about consent, um, kind of later in the conversation, but every step of online education is really, um, its effectiveness has been, uh, dictated by gender, caste, location, religion, disability. And so I, I think our team at Chavik is going to put up some numbers um, on the screen to kind of support this. Um, I'm not going to read through the stats here, but I am going to jump to, um, there we go. Yeah, so take a moment to take this in. And I see a question in the chat and we'll, we'll get to that in, in a moment here, but thank you for putting in, putting in the question. Um, Tanchal, I would like to jump to you next. Um, as we think about uh, um, kind of the intersectionality, um, how can organizations and policies best support inclusivity when designing programs around digital learning? Uh, so uh, 
जिस तरीके से प्रियंका ने शेयर किया था कि फैट किस तरीके से काम करता है तो उसी में मेरा है कि फैट का फैट का मानना है कि जो भी युवा महिलाएं हैं और गर्ल्स हैं हमारी कम्युनिटीज की वो किस तरीके से अपनी टेक्नोलॉजी को इस्तेमाल करते हुए अपने समुदाय में उससे चेंज ला सकती है है ना तो वैसे ही हम बिलीव करते हैं कि जो भी टेक्नोलॉजी बनाई जा रही है जो भी अभी डिवाइसेस आ रहे हैं उसमें किस तरीके से उनका इन्वॉल्वमेंट रहता है और साथ ही में कि लास्ट हमने देखा था कि लास्ट लास्ट जब हम इस चीज पे काम कर रहे थे तो हमारा एक प्रोग्राम रन होता है जी एस टैम करके जिसमें हमने देखा कि हमारी जो नॉलेज होती है जो हमारी स्टडी बैकग्राउंड है हम जिस समुदाय में आ रहे हैं वहां पर किस तरीके से हमें दी जा रही है तो जब हमें बोर्ड के माध्यम से जो स्टडी स्कूल्स में हमें पढ़ाई जाती थी या फिर जो हमें चीजें सिखाई जा रही है स्कूल में वो हमें कितना आ भी रहा था अः जैसे मैं अपना खुद का एग्जाम्पल दू तो मुझे जो स्कूल में चीजें सिखाई गई थी वो मुझे नहीं आती थी नहीं सीखी मैंने बस डिग्री लेने के लिए पढ़ाई हो तो गई थी वैसे ही जब हम अपना ये प्रोग्राम चलाने के लिए स्टडी कर रहे थे तो हमने उस दौरान पे देखा था कि किस तरीके से स्कूल में डिफरेंस है पढ़ाई में और क्या हम इम्प्रूवमेंट कर सकते हैं तो हमने देखा कि जब हम हैंड्स ऑन तरीके से चीजें करने लगे प्रोजेक्ट के माध्यम से तो वो एक इंटरेस्ट बिल्ड हुआ वो नॉलेज बिल्ड हुई टेक्नोलॉजी को लेके हो चाहे वो डिजिटल स्टडी को लेकर हो वहां पे उनका इन्वॉल्वमेंट बढ़ा और साथ ही में जब उनका करिकुलम बन रहा था जब हम प्रोग्राम बना रहे थे ऐसा नहीं था कि किसी सीनियर ने बनाकर हमें दे दिया है और हम उसको रन कर रहे हैं अपने समुदाय की जो युवा महिलाएं थी उसको किस तरीके से उसमें इन्वॉल्व कर सकते थे उसको उनका प्रोग्राम जो बन रहा है क्या होना चाहिए कैसी चीजें रन होनी चाहिए वो सभी उनमें इन्वॉल्वमेंट रहा है चाहे वो करिकुलम हो या हमारी फैट पॉलिसीज हो वो सब हम कलेक्टिवली इस चीज में इन्वॉल्व uh, होते हैं तो हाँ ये एक चीज है थैंक यू धन्यवाद सिमिलर क्वेश्चन प्रीति आपके लिए support for communities and individuals uh, who touch kind of many intersections here right many many uh, sectors opriti you're on mute sorry you know i'm doing this every time <laughs> no that's so okay i think as an also as an organization we always promoted uh, digital literacy even before pandemic but it was during pandemic when we realized that uh we need to de- do it more rigorously and i think that's how we partner with amazon future engineers and we uh, started in this direction so i think there can be multiple approaches to solve this issue at different levels but me coming from uh, an education background and working with primary schools so for me the solution would be to start it early with the primary graders and uh, like we see generally in schools it just uh, digital literacy uh, or we digital labs we talk about it's only rest- it is only restricted to just learning to how to run a computer and how to make excel maybe and how to make a word file but not just limiting it to that uh, the scope is much larger and that's what we are trying to do uh, through our digital curriculum the curriculum is not just restricted uh, restricted to learning uh, to uh, run a tab but it also includes how to do primary level of coding and uh, and how to create some apps which our primary kids are doing to um, my surprise children have been doing great and they have ex- accepted it really well because everything is hands on and we are restricting ourselves to use any textbooks to teach uh, them uh, this everything they are doing is it's uh, done through computers and uh, every child uh, is using a tab with a friend uh, in pairs and they are uh, doing it every day so i think uh, for me uh, there are three very very important things if we talk about this and what can what more can be done in this manner is one is providing access because it needs to be hands on you can't teach it through textbooks or uh, virtually children need to have the device in their hands that's how they learn and not rest- restricting the curriculum to just uh, learning to how to run a device but 
ex experimenting with new things and making it uh, and the focus should be the lifelong skills like i uh, talked about earlier uh, second the most important thing is uh, talking safety uh, the children orientations on how they can use the space uh, in a safe manner and how to rest restrict the use because once you tell them how to run a device they would have at least one phone is one smartphone is available at home uh, so it can be excessive for them mm -hmm. and uh, that's how we also included parents we did a lot of orientations for parents as well that we are teaching children this at school if they ask for uh, the device at home what can you do and how can you use it what are the apps you can uh, give them access to so i think uh, the education should not just be limited to the students but uh, parents as well because we're dealing with primary kids and it's really really important so i think the safety measures it becomes really important in our context third one is uh, exposure of how to use this technology in real life and uh, for that we are doing this beautiful program with amazon again uh, which is called class chats where uh, people from different professions and departments they would come in and they would talk to children and th these usually open or uh, happen virtually and the focus of these class chats is on uh, giving children exposure to that uh, technology is not just re restricted to engineering or uh, learning computers each and every profession requires technology in an equal way like your teachers also create your uh, learning material over laptops so they need access to technology and similarly a delivery agent at amazon uses technology to deliver items so giving them that exposure that technology is everywhere and it's not res restricted to just few uh, of the professions so i think for me uh, uh, three important points would be providing access uh, educating them on uh, safety and giving them the exposure for future yeah, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Deborah, I would like to come to you next, um, kind of a similar kind of question, right? How can we ensure that digital uh, literacy and safety, digital safety training programs are accessible and relevant to diverse communities? Um, yes, I think it's important to um, recognize that there is really no one size fit all when it comes to digital safety or working on digital literacy for um, issues that marginalized communities navigate. And so it becomes uh, really important to talk to communities, um, have those conversations, understand their specific needs, and really work in a participatory manner where the approach is to start from where people are at. For example, when we work with uh, say trans sex workers where they have digital security needs that are very much tied to their occupation. Uh, uh, like I said, be it image based abuse, abuse or online payments, which um, again need to be connected with identification documents, which become difficult for a lot of them because they are trans persons and because sex work has its own privacy concerns. On the other hand, uh, say young women and girls who go to college um in cities or like in semi-urban areas they would have a different set of concerns again queer activists uh they navigate very specific issues around outing surveillance transphobia and they might be looking for um say safer alternatives to whatsapp for organizing for activism so the needs are really very very diverse and so it's like it, it's very important to understand what digital safety even means for different communities or individuals, what platforms, what tools they would like to use, what other safer alternatives they would like to try out. And if these safer alternatives even make sense to them, uh, you know, as communities in terms of accessibility, language, the interface of the platforms. And also really important, uh, we feel that, uh, especially as a starting point to the conversations is to like, simplify or like uh, demystify these concepts around tech, uh, digital security, um, and, you know, conversations around digital rights, etc. Because uh, marginalized communities, they have been so historically distanced from tech landscapes and tech related conversations. 
so really important to also present information or knowledge um, like in an accessible way in local languages in local vocabulary as well there we go thank you um so we're gonna uh it, so much of what you said makes a lot of sense right that there is no one size fits all approach that you understand what or you try to understand what safety looks like to different people and try to try to meet them where they're at. Uh, we're going to switch topics a little bit here, but I want to make sure, uh, Priyanka, we didn't have a specific question directed at you, but if you have any um, thoughts, comments, um, I want to make sure that we we give you the, the chance here, but if not, also totally fine. No, I just want to say that uh, as Preeti also said, and uh, like it's for a uh, fat understand if we want girls in STEM, uh, the intervention should be as early as much. If we not intervention early, uh, we would not uh, see girls in STEM because uh, the community uh, we work is a marginalized community and, and they have a lots of, uh, um, I said, boundaries for girls and 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 for them it's breaking is very difficult when their age come to like 14 15 16 and after menstruation for them it's breaking is huge uh thing so uh it's really important if we want to see in digital space girl because that's their rights so we should have to intervention early i just want to say that oh, thank you Thank you. Yeah. And um, I said, we're going to change topics, right? Change. We have partnerships. Um, we, we can't work alone. And so uh, I would love to hear from, from you and maybe Chanchal will come to you first about how you work with, um, if you can talk about sort of the community support and outreach. That, that your organization does uh, with the Girls in STEM program. Okay, um, as you already say, uh, change will not happen uh, for when one person change, and, and it's change will not happen fast. Change happens slow, but it will change. And FAT also believe that if we really want to see the change, we have to work with participant, but as well as community, because if we not work with community, we will not able to see yeah. the change that we want to see. And uh, in our um, girls in STEM program, uh, the we start engaging with them age of 10 and we engaging uh, till uh, 14. Uh, in that uh, age, uh, uh, girls learn about their school STEM concept, but through hands-on uh, projects. So, and, and because of that, their interest build a lot and, and they can see that they want to uh, take uh, in future uh, like science or they want to become a doctor or engineer or like electrician or anything, whatever they want, okay? But in, in STEM, they can see their future. Um, and in the, because uh, we want to change that, we also engage with the family. Uh, in Girls in STEM program, we have a two space. We call that one is a uh, community jugar lab and one is girls maker space. And both are in the community. Uh, so uh, look, because they are located in the community, the space is very visible and for very accessible for community, uh, community people and as well as our participants. So they can access easily those species. And, and for uh, we invite parents because if we're working with the participant, we have to build a good relationship with the parent so they can allow uh, them to uh, come these species. So uh, that's the reason we work with the parents and community together with the participants. Uh, we, allow, uh, we invite parents so they can see where their girls coming and what they're learning. Also, uh, because when the girls learn, when the girls learning uh, in the space about uh, a concept of science technology, uh, through the they making projects like electrical bell, uh, uh, light following robots. So we allow them to take that in their home, so they can show their parents what they are really learning. And because of that, parents uh, really uh, see their girls in the STEM, and they can see uh, their girls. Uh, doing STEM and doing some action also. 
and um, we also uh, in the uh, in the one year we hold community exhibition where like girls uh, like uh, presenting their uh, models that they made during learning time and they show their community people so um, people are very get inspired like when they see their girls uh, using technology because as i told you the community we work they, there is not uh, easy to access technology and when it's come to girls there is a very restriction for uh, so in that manner uh, we using technology and so um, also i will tell you like there is a uh, one community event there is a one participant she used scratch coding and make a game and she present in the in her own community and and like community people got very impressed because they never see girls using computer and using uh, doing a coding so for them it's very new thing and because of that uh, the slowly slowly uh, community perspective going to change now it's like they can see girls also can use technology and girls can also uh, do a lot of thing using uh, stem so because of that now they are encouraging their girls to go to space, go and learn. And during, as as you know, the pandemic time also, uh, when we give the, gave the tablet to the uh, participants, parents took the uh, responsibility of the safety of the tablet. Uh, we don't even, um, we, we are very relaxed at that time because they already took the responsibilities. And uh, so uh, that I would like to say that, like, if we really want to see, as I already told you, we really want to see girls in STEM, we have to engage early and we have to engage with the community of marginalization because they don't have access of technology. So we have to reach out to the people who don't have access and give them the access. Yeah, I just want to say. Thank you, Priyanka. Chanchala, apki taraf se koi comments or remarks? Nahi hai to bhi, it's fine, tika. Okay. Um, okay. Um, oh, why don't we go to you, Tabrati? Um, Apke, how does your program um, engage with other stakeholders, kind of community folks, parents? So while we primarily work with, um, you know, women and girls, uh, queer and trans persons directly, through our advocacy work, we do engage with other stakeholders. Like we have, um, an advocacy school called Uran, uh, which is with young women and girls from grassroots communities in Jharkhand, where stakeholder engagement is um, is a core, uh, like it's an essential component of the program, where my colleagues worked with um, girls and women on building their own advocacy knowledge and skills and building stakeholder support through very um, localized advocacy methods that are relevant to the communities. And like they used various communication tools like street plays, songs, um, local slogans, poems in uh, their own languages uh, to talk about gender norms that, they, uh, that the girls have to navigate every day. And here the stakeholders were families, community members, government officials as well who engaged with it. And from uh, these kinds of like community experiences, uh, we draw from these and we engage with national, regional, global advocacy platforms as well. For example, um, there are so many learnings that we have from our work with um, communities that has really been a driving force in starting uh, gender conversations at the Internet Governance Forum, which is uh, one of the most prominent advocacy spaces at a global level, which earlier did not have a gender tra a track specifically. And this is a multi-stakeholder space where there are so many tech companies, organizations, community activists, researchers, um, people from like interdisciplinary spaces coming together to discuss and recommend um, ideas and solutions around internet and digital rights. So we try and infuse like the hyper local narratives around gender and tech in these conversations and try to gender these conversations, debinarize them um, and you know bring in like amplify queer and trans narratives as well. Also there are um, tech companies again who from time to time also reach out to us for consultations around 
uh, say digital safety for women, content moderation, etc. Uh, where we again we are always drawing from lived experiences of communities we've been working with in like engaging with stakeholders. Thank you. And Preeti, Apkili, a similar question. How, how does your organization work with other stakeholders? And after this, I know we're coming yeah. in time, so we'll switch to some questions from the audience. We've had some in the chat, both on Facebook um, and in Zoom, so we'll do that. But yeah. So when we decided that we really want to do something in this uh, area and we want to start uh, digital labs in our schools, so I think finding the right kind of partners who believe in the same uh, design principles we believe in, uh, I think that was uh, the biggest challenge. And we were able to find Amazon as a partner who they were able to uh, like provide us device. And then they continued the support with engaging us with uh, different uh, partners who could help us with the curriculum and support. And, and I think the vision of also align where we uh, and really want to do it for our family. The pilot, if it's possible or not. And then uh, I think after the first year we were able to convince that yes, we are able to do it in the family schools. And I think we started with a uh, mission to uh, replicate the model in other MCD schools as well, uh, other than the three schools we are uh, currently working with. So basically, uh, that a uh, section was uh, like one was the partnership with the right partners to start the program with Amazon, and then it was with MCD. So running the program in three uh, schools, running the pilot, showing them what it can do, and then uh, bringing it. Currently, what we are doing is like I said, we are doing it with 24, uh, 27 more schools within MCD and in primary schools, and it was started earlier uh, this year. So uh, we have already scaled up the program with support of MCD from 500 to 5,000 uh, students. So uh, that's one. Another is uh, teacher skilling. Uh, so teachers are equal stakeholders in this when we talk about the digital skilling program uh, when we're doing it at scale. So uh, we have uh, we have started uh, educating uh, teachers and training them time to time. And we do have our coordinators, coordinators who would visit the schools and help them set up their laboratories and uh, run the classrooms initially and uh, would support them with uh, anything they needed the school to run this program successfully. And I think uh, other than that, uh, like providing the devices with help of Amazon, plus contextualizing the computer and science curriculum for each school and each community, because uh, yes, we are working in Delhi and communities are much really same, but there are differences from uh, place to place. So we do context, uh, contextualize the computer and science curriculum for the teacher training and for the uh, teacher and students. So it's uh, uh, so it can run successfully and it can be technology driven. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so let's let's take some questions uh, from the audience here. Um, a question, uh, one question that came in was, how can we change narratives of women and girls in digital spaces, right? As someone said, right, Lucky bigger, bigger jaggy. Um, how, how do we start to um, change that? Um, okay, mindset to nahi badal sakte, but how can we start to influence? Um, the, uh, I'll open it up to the panel. Yeah, I think uh, most important is, like I said, uh, sh giving parents and students, the, uh, basically the community, the exposure that a device is not just rec restricted to social media, because that's the most uh, very uh, important thing that really bothers uh, the parents. Uh, like if my girl is going to use social media, she's going to engage with uh, a lot of people and everything. So I think uh, changing that narrative first, that a device or, or when we talk about technology, it's not just limited to social media. There's much more that can be done through it. Yeah. I think also amplifying women and girls' voices, uh, you know, their experiences of using digital spaces, be it social media or be it anything like education or anything they want to use it for pleasure, work, studies, uh, you know, just am amplifying their experiences around this. And like Priyanka and Chanchal have said, you know, like engaging with 
communities, uh, building advocacy skills amongst uh, women and girls to negotiate, to advocate, uh, you know, for their own agency autonomy choices in digital spaces with communities that is also very important. Yes, uh, I just want to say a few words. Um, like, if we really want to change the uh, perspective of community, we have to show them that we can use technology for action, for earning money, for other different uh, things. Um, so, uh, like, uh, we all know technology is value neutral. It's our responsibility how we're using so it's up to us. Uh, so we also talk with our participants, like technology is value neutral, it's up to you how you're using. And also uh, we tell participants, and also I also do, because I also the alumni of that, uh, whatever I learn, I'll teach that in my home of my mother. And that's how my mother got see like what I'm really doing. And she's starting supporting me. So like, uh, we're not able to change whole perspective of full community, but I'm able to change my family perspective about technology that I am using it. I'm able to open, because of that, I'm able to open my cousin sister uh, a new uh, platform that they can also use technology uh, for their growth. So we have to show that in our parents, in our community, like technology can be used, teacher space can be used for growth, not uh, girls can spoil. But if we see when, uh, because when the girls got independent, when they take their own decision, obviously uh, the community and the parents where I come from, they have a problem. They have, because they never seen the that that thing in their whole life that oh girls using technology oh girls taking their own decision. So for them in the starting, it will be difficult to accept. But uh, as in my home, it is starting, it's very difficult, and then slowly, slowly, they accept it. So I think uh, slowly, slowly change will be happen. They need time. They need to see a different perspective in many times. We have to tell, we have to show them a different perspective in action, not just speaking. I also believe that, yeah. Uh, there we go. Thank you, Priyanka. Um, Sanchal? Anything from your end? Aapke taraf se kuch? <clears throat> Mera bhi similar to Priyanka hai kyunki kuch tham uh, dono ki journey kuch to same rahi hai kyunki jis tarike se technology ki baat aayi thi to um, starting mein bahut challenge hua tha kyunki technology sirf phone nahi tha mere liye. Uh, mere uh, aur bhi cheeze thi like uh, remote ko lekar bhi cheeze hoti thi usme bhi tha ki TV pe hum kya dekh rahe hai or laptop कौन use कर रहा है किस तरीके से मैंने अपनी family में नहीं देखी थी वो चीजें कि girls भी use कर सकती है technology तो वो fear मेरे अंदर भी था मेरी मम्मी के अंदर भी था और जो भी females थे family में ना वो fear बनता गया और वो phone से भी connect हो गया क्योंकि phone के माध्यम से जब से phone आया हम दूसरे लोगों से बहुत जल्दी connect हो जाते हैं चाहे वो social media हो या फिर किसी से number exchange करना हो या उस पे कुछ भी Google पे internet पे हम पढ़ रहे हो वो सब किस तरीके से हमारी पूरी लाइफ को कंट्रोल रखता है तो उसमें चेंज लाने में बहुत मुश्किल हुई थी स्टार्टिंग में बट हां डेफिनेटली चेंज आया है क्योंकि वो चेंज अभी मैं देख पाती हूं जैसे मैं हम तीन बहन है ना तीनों बहनों में जब मैंने स्टार्टिंग की थी तो मेरी फैमिली में मुझे बहुत प्रॉब्लम हुई थी मैंने स्ट्रगल किया चाहे वो फोन हो चाहे लैपटॉप हो क्योंकि मैंने एक चीज सोच ली थी कि लैपटॉप सीखूंगी ताकि मैं कुछ कर सकूं अर्न कर सकूं है ना तो but उसका पता नहीं था कि मेरा कितनी responsibility है मतलब मुझे मिल भी पाएगा या नहीं मिल पाएगा but जब वो मिला बाहर निकली मैं चीजें सीखी तो मैं अपनी बहनों के लिए वो रास्ता खोल पाई और आज मुझे पता है कि हम तीनों बहनें कहीं ना कहीं एक मुकाम पर है technology में ही हैं और ये एक proud feel होता है मुझे खुद भी कि दो engineer हैं और एक मैं यहाँ पर हूँ आज मैं just because कि टेक्नोलॉजी मैंने सीखी है तो चेंज आता है अभी मेरी कम्युनिटी में लोग देख पाते हैं हम तीनों बहनों को किस तरीके से कर रहे हैं क्योंकि एक टाइम ऐसा था जहां निकलना मुश्किल कर दिया था फैमिली ने कि नहीं निकल सकते आप गेट के बाहर नहीं खड़े हो सकते आप स्कूल जा रहे स्कूल के अलावा कहीं नहीं जा सकते हो स्कूल में भी जा रहे जो सीखा है वो घर तक सीमित था तो वो सब चीजें जो अभी चेंजेस आए हैं कि मैं अपनी सिटी में नहीं रह रही हूं अभी अपनी सिटी से बाहर हूं मैं भी मेरी सिस्टर भी सब 
जिस तरीके से जो चेंज आया है वो अभी जस्ट बिकॉज की टेक्नोलॉजी को जाना है समझा है पढ़ा है तो वो चेंज आता है धीरे धीरे आता है बट वो आता जरूर है अगर हम उसमें डटे रहे तो तो बस मुझे ये कहना था Thank you, thank you. Uh, and then we have one. I, I want to pose a question from our Facebook audience, um, and this is a little bit broader than just the digital divide and access to technology. But in the office, the question is: in the office, um, in school, in college, women and girls face so many uh, problems that the and that they're not treated equally. Um, so thoughts on that, on how we start to change that narrative, or how we work on overall just equal treatment of women in in any space. Okay, uh, could you please repeat again? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, do you have thoughts on um how we start to treat women equally in any space, or in office, in school, in college? But often women are treated not equally in these spaces. Um, they they face a lot of problems. Uh, so how can we start to treat women more equally in these spaces? How can we work on that? I think first, um, uh, that's what I think. I think first, um. because because maybe i'll come to the certain community where girls get less opportunity than a uh, boys so uh, first like i have to accept like girls can also uh, uh, do uh, equal work as men that that need to be because that scenario is, is still in in the office like girls not doing equal work as as boys or as men uh, so i i think that need to be changed because um, and also um, if i can say that in digital space also in stem also uh, so that we should make some policies okay uh, in in office also um, that uh, should cooperate equal uh, um equality and equity is together because when we talk about equality we have to see equity also and we have to see the uh, there is a other uh, uh, lens also we have to see in in those lens also uh, so i think um, let me change here in my hindi language because i'm more comfortable with that that's fine uh, that's fine yeah. सो uh, so, uh, मुझे ये लगता है कि uh, जब हम पॉलिसीज uh, को लेकर पॉलिसीज बनाते हैं और उनको एक्चुअली पॉलिसी जस्ट बनाना इज नॉट द वर्क इम्प्लीमेंटिंग इज 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 वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज अगर हम उनको इम्प्लीमेंट नहीं करते और प्रॉपरली इम्प्लीमेंट नहीं करते उनको रिव्यू नहीं करते हैं तो वो भी एक प्रॉब्लम uh, क्रिएट करता है और हम जब क्योंकि हर जगह पे शायद जिस ऑफिस में शायद मैं अभी जहाँ पे काम कर रही हूँ वहां पे हम सभी इक्वली हैं हम सब डिसीजन मेकिंग साथ में करते हैं बट शायद मैं किसी और अलग ऑफिस में जाऊँ शायद वहां पर ये स्पेस मुझे ना मिले बट अगर पॉलिसीज होंगी तो शायद वो वर्क करेगा शायद वो इक्वल स्पेस मुझे प्रोवाइड करेगा मुझे ऐसा लगता है लेकिन इसके साथ ही मैं बहुत जरूरी है कि हम इसके ऊपर बात करें जहाँ पे ये हो रहा है एक्शंस ले कंप्लेन्स करें मुझे लगता है कि वो क्योंकि कभी कभी जब हमारे साथ एक फीमेल के साथ एक वुमेन के साथ जब डिस्क्रिमिनेशन होता है कभी कभी हम भी खुद चुप रहे मैं खुद इन द स्टार्टिंग बिफोर जॉइनिंग फैट मैं खुद चुप रहती जब मेरे साथ डिस्क्रिमिनेशन होता था तो मुझे लगता है वो स्पीक आउट करना बहुत जरूरी है अपना स्टैंड लेना बहुत जरूरी है दैट इज द फर्स्ट स्पेस फर्स्ट स्पेस जो हमें करना चाहिए ये मुझे लगता है थैंक यू प्रियंका कोई और राइट आई एम So I think that's what we have time for today. Uh thank you all all of you for sharing your candidly sharing your thoughts, your expertise. I have two little girls, one is 5, one is 18 months. So this topic is near near and dear to my heart. Um I was born and raised in India and I know that I feel lucky to have my parents moved here um in their mid 40s to to the states and so that we, we talked about opportunities, right? And so I feel lucky in that and I I feel privileged 
to to kind of to moderate this this panel um and you're doing some incredibly powerful work um so thank you um uh, sus subscribe to Shadika's um, channel on Instagram, on Facebook. We will post recording of this conversation in those places. And then, um, yeah, find ways to stay connected. Again, thank you. Thank you to our wonderful panelists. And thank you to our audience for joining. Thank you to our support team, our Shadika's com communications and kind of back in support. Bye, everyone. Thank you.